What's up YouTube? How you guys doing? I hope you're all having an amazing day. This is Lucas back again with another video for you guys and today we are recapping stage three of the national finals on American Ninja Warrior. Season 10 has officially come to a close. Drew Dreschel was our grand champion, $100,000 and well deserved man. Drew absolutely deserved it. Unfortunately, we didn't see a total victory. Nobody was able to complete all four stages in the national finals. But for the first time ever, Ninja Warrior is giving away $100,000 to the last man standing. And this year that was Drew. We already took a close look at stage two. If you haven't seen that video where we break that stage down, make sure to go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. For now, we're gonna look at stage three. We're gonna talk about the obstacles and my gosh, was stage three impossible. Here we go. First obstacle is the floating doors, which now is becoming, this is a stage three staple, okay? Every stage on American Ninja Warrior has a staple. In the qualifying round, there will always be a warped wall. In city finals, there will always be a salmon ladder. Stage three is always gonna have the floating doors, I think. I don't think it's going anywhere. That and the cliffhanger. Second obstacle is a brand new obstacle. It's called Unguard. This obstacle, I really don't like. Let me clarify. I like this obstacle. I really don't like it for stage three, and here's why. Let me pause it. If you make it to stage three, you have proven that you are one of the elite ninjas, all right? You're insane. If you make it to stage three, you're seriously, basically an all-time great on American Ninja Warrior. These very difficult stages, stage one requires a lot of speed, stage two also speed, but a lot of power, a lot of grip endurance, a lot of grip strength. You've now made it to stage three. We've seen you fly through the air. We've seen you do technical, tricky stuff. I personally think stage three, it's now really all about grip. I personally don't wanna see somebody fail in stage three because a tricky obstacle messed them up. I wanna see someone fail stage three because their grip simply could not hold on anymore. They gave out, which is why stage three, they call it a rock climber's playground. Rock climbers thrive in stage three because stage three is all about grip. This second obstacle to me is very technical, very tricky, and it can mess somebody up. Somebody can be on the second obstacle completely fresh, have all their grip left, and just make a silly mental mistake trying to close or open this bar. So that's kind of my logic for not loving this obstacle in stage three. I know the flying bars in stage three, that's a technical obstacle, but I see that as a staple on stage three, and, and, and that's not quite the same as on guard, where you have, to, you have a split second to close or open this bar. I went into detail on how this obstacle works in my testing video, showing you guys Isaac Caldero doing it. Those ledges where the bar lands get more narrow and more wide, and you literally have to close the bar so it lands on the narrow ones, and you have to open the bar so it lands on the wider platforms, and if you don't open it in time, you fall straight down. Again, a minor technical error can put you in the water. Not my favorite for stage three. Maybe I'm overthinking it. What do you think of this obstacle? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Drew, of course, clears it. I like that they put, see the stoppers right there on your screen? They put a little piece of metal there that stops the bar from sliding all the way off. Testing that piece of metal was not there. You could slide right off the end of that thing and that was a nightmare. So I'm glad they added that for when they actually competed. So here we go, Drew gets one swing and dismounts. Efficiency, we talked about that in our stage two breakdown. Drew is the best ninja out there in my opinion for many reasons, but one is efficiency. Crazy clocks, spins them around perfectly, perfect transfer. So much power on that second clock, that's impressive. And dismounts. I got to test this obstacle. You're taking a look at me testing this obstacle right now. One critical thing about doing a lache, or basically when you throw your body from one apparatus to another, you don't want your arms to be bent and at 90 degrees, you don't want all that tension. You want to straighten out your arms and relax your arms for when you do the lache. I have some really bad technique here because I was nervous these clock handles are loose. And I saw some people in testing straighten their arms and the clocks would come back when they would get a swing, so I, kept, I stayed really tight. Uh, that's kind of my logic for that. Drew stayed pretty tight also. I'll actually show you guys a video of Joe Morofsky. Same thing happens to him. Watch right when he goes for the lache. This is from Joe's YouTube channel. Go subscribe to Joe Morofsky, one of the best ninjas out there. When he goes for the lache, you see the clock handle actually move a little bit. That's, that's what I'm talking about. The way those clock handles are loose, you kind of want to keep it tight on this specific obstacle. In general for laches, you don't want to keep your arms bent. But I think on this one, you know, it could help. Drew clears the crazy clocks pretty easily, and now onto the cliffhanger. This new cliffhanger, getting some hate. I'm seeing some negative comments about the new look. It's plexiglass now, you can see right through it. It used to not be plexiglass, obviously. I personally like this. It's helpful for the crowd. If you're there live, it is so annoying that you can't see the, the cliffhanger from behind, but now you can put people in bleachers behind the cliffhanger and they can still see what's going on through the plexiglass, so I personally think this is a win. I'm so mad I was not able to test the cliffhanger. I wanted to test the obstacle so bad I wasn't able to. All right, Drew turns around, gets a nice big pump, looks so in control, and I do not know what went wrong. Now, we've got a few things to consider. Sean Bryan is the only competitor besides Drew Dreschel 
who made it to stage three. Sean had just gone before him and Sean failed on the cliffhanger. So Drew knew in order to win this season, he had to get to the cliffhanger faster than Sean. That probably affected Drew's psychology. He got there quick, right? He wasn't taking his time. Drew was moving through these obstacles at a pretty aggressive pace because he knew he needed to beat Sean's time. Maybe that's why he failed the cliffhanger. All that said, he failed the cliffhanger, but he's still our grand champ. He got $100,000, so first transfer looked perfect. Second transfer, look at it, bam. Looks to me like a perfect catch. All four fingers are on on both hands. Arms are bent so we can absorb the landing. One thing to consider, you may not know this if you're watching on TV, about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, something like that. I, I might be off on that, but the point is, in the same night of filming, he just did stage two, okay? Drew and Sean both had just done stage two an hour to two and a half, three hours, something like that before. I don't remember exactly. I decided I watched stage two, then we were hanging out as they explained the rules for stage three. So fatigue sets in, man. Like that's why, that's one of the reasons it's so hard to win this show. So hard to win this show. Unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see the rest of the obstacles on stage three, but I'll tell you what they were. They did break them down if you watch the show. We had the curved body prop after, the peg clouds, then Kane Lane, which we saw this year in one of the city finals courses. Kane Lane is an awesome obstacle, and in my opinion, an awesome addition to stage three. Maybe I'm contradicting myself because it's also kind of technical and you can make a silly mistake, but it's less technical than on guard in my opinion and it's just such a cool obstacle. And after Kane Lane, I believe was the flying bar. If, if Drew or Sean had completed all those obstacles, then they would have moved on to stage four, Mount Midoriyama, and climbed the rope for a million dollars. My thoughts on stage three this year, I think it's probably a little bit too hard. I don't love On Guard, the new obstacle. Believe it or not, you may not believe this. You may think to yourself as you watch show, NBC doesn't want to give away a million dollars. And I don't think that's true. Um, I know that might sound ridiculous, but hear me out. The show makes a lot of money, a lot more than a million dollars. They can afford to give away a million dollars. And when they get somebody who wins the whole thing, that boosts ratings, all right? Ratings in season seven when Isaac Caldera won the whole thing, ratings were up the next season. I believe they do want a total victory, and I think right now it's a little bit too hard. And if they keep it this hard in season 11, maybe we'll get somebody to beat it, but I don't think they can make it any more difficult than this. So hopefully for season 11, producers are able to get it just right and producers are able to finally get a course that's difficult, but not too difficult. So some people can pass and some people can make it to stage four. Maybe we can have a climb off in stage four, maybe two or three guys make it past stage three. Let me know what you think in the comments below about this year's stage three. Is it too hard? Who do you think can get it done in season 11? Do you think Drew can come back and get a total victory in season 11? Maybe Sean Bryan can pull it off. Daniel Gill, Najee Richardson. What about Joe Morofsky? He failed in stage one this year, but he's an amazing competitor. He might've been able to go all the way. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Don't forget to hit the like button. It helps my channel out a lot. And consider subscribing. I post new videos every week. When you hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so all my new videos come right to you. Check me out on Instagram. Most of you guys already follow me at basically Lucas. Don't forget to also follow at Brazy Bros, our official account. I'm gonna be doing some live streams on that Instagram account so I can make more content for you guys. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Remember, work hard, stay focused, never quit. Peace out.